Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fulton Street Beats. What we have here is the Floral Pattern 2 gem. And, um, well, it's a knockoff. It's not the real deal, although it does have a pretty nice shape, and it's, it's done quite nicely. Beautiful, beautiful neck on this thing, by the way. Let me get you up here. Beautiful, beautiful neck. Gorgeous inlays. And um, overall, just a pretty cool guitar. I have upgraded the pickups to some evolutions um, on the bridge and on the neck. The center pickup I have kept stock, it sounded really good, and um, I figured I'd keep it. We already have $200 in pickups and I didn't want to go anymore. So that's where we're at. I've also upgraded the locking nut here. Get you in there. We've upgraded that locking nut and the string bar. We've upgraded those as well as some. Very nice Goto tuners. Really cool. Hope you can see that. Okay. So, what else are we going to do? Well, we're going to finish setting up this guitar. I've got the pick guard off right now. Um, I have a new trem system that we're going to be using. And it is a Floyd Rose style trem. And look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? This is by Wilkinson. Um, and I've learned a lot about Wilkinson and what the deal is with them. Apparently Wilkinson and Music Lily are have affiliates with each other. They're affiliated. And so is Goto, believe it or not. So um, that explains a lot about the quality of the base of this bridge and of the saddles themselves. Really nice. Now this one I've was is brand new, but I've ordered a kit to upgrade all the screws in this and the blocks. Because I like everything extra heavy duty. The only thing I did not change was the fine tuners on this. Now, full disclosure, the first one I got of this that I ordered came defective. Almost looked used. The fine tuners were stripped right out. And um, that was kind of weird. I had a, they, they weren't in straight, nothing like that. Looked like somebody cross-threaded them. And um, kind of screwed it up and sent it back. And they sent me a used one. This one, however, arrived in perfect condition. It's super, super nice. They have a pop-in trim bar, and it screws in or out to adjust your trim bar height, which I thought was also awesome. And your spring retainers on the back, we'll call them a spring. They're not real. They're springy, but they're not a spring. They have little grooves in them, so these really adjust and move nicely when you need to unlock your locks, which is really cool. Now, I do also have another one. This is the box they come in. Wilkinson M series, and if you look on the side of the box, that's uh, by Music Lily, and they are a Wilkinson, so they're affiliated. Um, and here is an original version that is not upgraded, and as you can see, this has the black blocks and the black hold down screws for for your saddles, and the black screws to lock the saddles in place here. This is brand new. This just arrived today. This is actually going to be a giveaway on the channel. So some lucky viewer is going to end up win it, winning this. Stay tuned for details on that. So we're going to put that back in here for safekeeping. And um, we'll carry on with this. We're going to do an install. But we're going to do some work to this thing first because we want to make sure everything's right. Now I spent some some time yesterday doing some rewiring and adding an extra ground for peace of mind in the back. Um, but this is a, it's a nice setup. It really is. It's a nice looking guitar. The best part about this guitar is the neck. Beautiful playing neck. Um, so I figured why not put another trim in it. Now I have added a piece of rubber here and that just cuts down on vibration in the trim system. I do that to a lot of them. And this is going to simply drop in here, and it fits so nicely. I did have to Dremel out a little bit, and as you can see, it looks pretty good. You can't really tell um, here. It looks factory. So, yeah, I got a lot of experience using Dremels and routers and what have you, so I pretty much have all that stuff down when I need to get something done. So, we're going to flip this over first. Now, you know what? We're not going to flip it over first. While we're right here on the front, let's do this. Let's pull this out here, and we are going to start conditioning the fretboard. I've cleaned the frets, I've polished the frets last night, but let's condition the fretboard now. And um, you know I'm a big believer in coconut oil, but this time we're going to use some lemon oil on this one because, well, I got a brand new thing of lemon oil, and I kind of want to use it, and we can use the coconut oil later on. And uh, 
the applicator on this is, is a neat trick here. I got to get it flowing. If we can get it flowing here. There she comes. Okay. And we're just going to wipe that on. Sometimes it takes a few. Well, this is a. The frets up here are scalped. So we got to get in there. And a little dab will do you. Right away, you'll see the difference. I wish they made a coconut oil that was thinned out so we could do this. Sometimes this takes a couple applications. Let's get that down here. You can see the difference here. I hope you can. Usually it's two applications of lemon oil that I have to use. It doesn't work as well as the organic coconut oil for conditioning the fretboard, but it's a quick, it works quickly. I mean, but it doesn't absorb as well. This is what I should say. So we're going to do that. And probably going to have to, yeah, we're going to have to do a couple. It's it's absorbing in really, really well. I may have to do coconut oil instead of this um, just to make sure. But I'm going to wipe this in with my rag. And we don't have any residue coming off because I have cleaned the fretboard. I've already cleaned it. But I haven't... Um, conditioned it yet so let's take care of that yeah so there's our first round right there now let's go a second time and we'll let this one actually penetrate and sip a little bit yeah lemon oil is a thing that uh, a lot of people love and I'm gonna show you maybe we can break out the coconut oil and I'll show you the difference between the lemon oil and the coconut oil. I get up on the side of the edge of the fretboard also. There. There we go. Trying to get it in here. There we go. Those scalp frets are a little more of a pain to get in. Okay. So we'll let that sit. You can rub it in with your fingers if you like. It's not going to hurt it none. Okay, so there that is. And if you guys want to see, if you can see, if the lighting will let you see, there's your lemon oil. Now, this blows people's mind. People's minds take some nature's promise. That's what I use anyhow. Organic coconut oil. Now watch. Let's find a spot where you can see the light here. Okay, these two frets, I'll show you the difference here. Can you see that? You see that difference? The shine is much more deep with the coconut oil. And that's just kind of how it works with coconut oil. So we'll just put a layer over that. It conditions the wood a lot better too. So let's just do that over it. What's nice about the lemon oil though, the lemon oil will clean really quickly. So, and we don't need to use a lot of coconut oil, just enough to get on our fingers, rub it in. Now, you want to make sure you use organic coconut oil if you're going to do this. And that's because if it's not organic, it means it has other components in it and they, they can go rancid. And there's nothing, you, you don't want a stinking guitar neck, something that smells, that can happen. So you want to make sure it's organic. You see that difference? Look at the difference in that shine. So people who say, hey, why aren't you using lemon oil all the time? Well, this is why. And it lasts a lot longer. And as long as you wipe it off good, and it conditions, it penetrates so much better. Yes, that is so much better. And it just feels so much better when you're done. You want to take off all your greases, but it's just a better feeling. It's not a... Lemon oil will actually leave your fretboard feeling a little bit dry. And this doesn't. So I just make sure I get up around my frets really well. And yes, look at the difference. I don't know if you can see the difference in the frets themselves, but they actually gleam. So it's X, the coconut oil acts as a conditioner for the frets also. Very cool. Okay.
So we got that done. And if you want to use both in conjunction with each other, go ahead. Um, you don't have to. I have the lemon oil. Like I said in other videos, a lot of people didn't think I use it. I use it sometimes. Um, but there you go. Very nice, right? It looks pretty good. Okay. So now what are we going to do? Well, now we're going to move this back. And we're going to have to install this trim, but I'm going to grab these strings and I like to show you guys different tricks and tips. These strings are by a company called Orphes. Orphes.com. Okay, and here they are. This is a 10 pack of strings. They run around 24 bucks, and I think there's a little discount on them. You can get them on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. You know how you get good guitars from China and you say, oh my god, look at the strings. They actually went and they put good strings on. Well, Sometimes we're a little surprised when the strings are um, the Adario. Now look at this. These are not Adario, but they are all marked. And they all have color-coordinated ball ends on them. Which is very cool. Because that's just an awesome thing, right? The color-coordinated color ball ends. Now, who, who wouldn't... Who wouldn't want that? But they're decent strings, too. They really are. I mean, they're super, super good. They're on par with those Donners that I tested a while back. So, um, and the, what brought me onto these strings, or how I found these, was I couldn't get the Donners anymore. And the Donners, as you guys probably know, um, if you watch my back episodes, were com are they, I believe they're comparable, if not better than, an Ernie Ball Slinky. So... I was running those. You can't get them anymore for some reason. Donner doesn't seem to have them. Um, these come in package in the foil. They're double packaged. So you, they're in here and in here. A little card in here. Um, it's all in Chinese, of course. But, um, yeah, Orphe is the name. So, I'll, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to give them a try. If you're stringing up guitars all the time like I am, I think they're well worth it. Now, let's bring you down here and move this down a little bit here and let's um, let's start putting some strings on this so the first thing I'm going to do is clean this just give it a wipe off while I'm right here it's already pretty clean but give this a wipe off and I'm probably going to back this um, String bar out right here. A touch. There we are. And I'm going to pull these lockers right off for now. And this is a brand new locking nut. And the locking nut itself actually comes with this, with this bridge. And I upgraded the uh, Allen heads for this that come in another kit that costs about 15 bucks. So what's this cost if you're going to buy this? It's around 60 bucks. They're really inexpensive and they're really good quality. And you can you can put a high mass um, brass block on them if you want, although these feel really, really decent, really heavy. So I think the sustain should be okay. Um, so let's get our gauges in order here. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we'll start here with our E string, and I'm gonna show you how I how I do these. I don't I don't set these. I take, I leave the ball ends on. I don't take the ball ends off. A lot of people don't take the ball ends off. This is how Steve Vai's Guitar Tech does it. This is how I do it. We run them through. You see that? In there, going so right through. So the ball end is right there, okay? Right in there, just like that. I'm going to put it under my string bar. Just kind of kick it to the side. And then we'll take this next string, which is the purple string. And we do the same thing. Just make sure it is going straight down through. We're going to go under the string bar. See how perfectly that just run down through right under the bar. Don't need to remove the bar. There's two. 
And then what we can do is take one of our retaining keys for the locking nut, and just kind of start it so the strings aren't all willy-nilly. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. There we are. See that? There you go. So those are those, and we'll go to the next one, which is the green one. And the reason I do this is so I only have to make one cut at the other end. And we have very little winds, if any, up top. So the less winds you have, the better it is for not just not, I don't want to say tuning stability, because that's not what I'm looking for. But when you loosen up your locking nut and your wound, it creates a lot of tension releasing and escaping over a lot of string amount, if that makes any sense. So we are eliminating that. So the less winds, the better. Now, okay. So now what we do is we take all of our strings, and I'm bringing it down here. We take all of our strings and we take them all at once. We're going to pull them all taunt. Just like so. Taunt. And we're going to pull them all over to one side. Make sure I get. Pull these all over to one side. Okay. And what I'm going to do, well, let's get, our, let's get our bridge in so you know where that's going to sit first. So I'm going to hold these strings and pop this bridge in if I can get this to sit in the wedge here real quick. There we are. There's our wedge. So that's just an approximation. Now I'm going to pull this just past where they go into the locks here. Get you over there. Where they go into the locks. These are where they go in. We're going to go put just past this. You don't want to do it to the middle because you don't want them to fan out. That means they'd be too short by the time they got to here. But if you pull it to one side towards you here, and just keep, your, keep these strings taut down through. And you pull it to one side so it's just past it. Here, where my hand is. We can literally take these all at once and cut them like so. And now these are all the right length to go in here with minimal winds. I hope that makes sense to you guys. That's a trick I learned from Steve Vai's Guitar Tech. And um, it's been actually pretty helpful. So now that we got that happen, I'm gonna take this down a little bit here. I wish I could give you guys a little better light over here. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. There we are. If it goes out, I apologize. So what I am going to do right now is, is I'm not going to hook up any, um, there's nothing heat, there's no tension or anything on the back because there's no spring. So I'm going to take a little 9 volt battery and I'm going to just kind of pop it under here for a second. Just to kind of hold it where I need it. And I'm going to loosen off the block retainers. I'm going to st stick this right down in there, like so, okay, and then tighten it. Make sure you're all the way down in, and in the center. Center is very important, and that's, there we are. So we're all the way down in. We have new blocks in here. There's the block retainer. It's not quite center. I am, I am very anal about these being in the center, so bear with me for a second. Okay, there's one. I'll back this one off. And this might get boring and monotonous to some of you to watch, but um, anything, any problems we run into, we're transparent and uh, we face those together, then we know. Okay, now I'm snugging these. I'm not locking them hard right now. I'm going to come back through and give them a better lockdown, but as you can see, see how easy this is right now? So, loosen, down in, and don't kink them. You want these to roll in, right in the groove, roll in, hit the bottom as far as it can go, lock it down, and when you put your rod, when we put our tension on, that's the only kink, that's the only bend you want. You want one bend, you don't want different bends. So don't, don't use needle nose to put them in. A lot of people do that. And then your string sounds dead. 
so don't do that. Okay, and back that off, and as we back it off, slide this one in, make sure it's all the way down. What's nice, what, and why I upgrade these parts on, well, all bridges, really, I just get an upgrade kit, because they hold better, the threads are better, you don't have a tendency of stripping out anything ever, and the blocks themselves grab better. There's nothing worse than getting a guitar tuned up and then having a string pop out on you because it didn't grip. And a lot of these are painted where they have a, uh, where they'll have a finish on them and uh, makes it slippery so your string can pop out. Because remember, your higher strings don't have any winds, any, they're not wound. So, now I can't really see because I don't have my good glasses on. There we are. Not in the center though. This is the important one to really have in the center right here. Okay. And there's that. So now I'm going to go on through and I'm going to give these all a better snug just to make sure. Boom. 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 And you see the battery put this bridge almost level, right? Okay. Puts... Normally when I set up a bridge, it doesn't have to be perfectly level because, well, we talked about that before. It's, it was about bridge, or I'm sorry, uh, whammy bar height, your wiggle stick height. I set mine up for wiggle stick height. Now, that doesn't mean that you can go too far down. Some people they misunderstand every time I say something. That doesn't mean you can go way out of proportion. You can't go hugely out of proportion because, of course, other things will hit and come into play. But yes, you can be a little up or a little down out of the body or into the body without any difference. So if that's the case, you could never use your whammy bar. So let's think about it. We could never bring the whammy bar up, correct, if it didn't work right. And we could never loke with it and go backwards if it didn't work right. Okay, so it's either going to work or it's not. And that is the quality of the bridge itself. So there's our battery. I'm going to leave that sit right there. And I just got this kind of flush. So while I have this flush, now I'm going to back down through here. And you see our strings are very, very loose. Now I'm not going to, I'm going to put equal tension on these. Remember, there's no springs in the back whatsoever right now. But what I'm going to do while, while it's flush is kind of just take up a little bit of slack. Okay, there we go, just a little bit. Just to get the, the wiggles out of here. Nothing major, nothing to put pressure on the bridge. Just uh, kind of start that here. There we are, see? Now you can see that's floating. Doesn't mean much. It's just making it less difficult for me to set this up. That's all. It makes sense. So you can see that now. And that's all. The string bubbles. The, the, how, the, how they were all willy nilly is gone. That's sitting in there. It's not going to go anywhere. So now we can roll, put the guitar over, and I, I have room to work. And this can move, and we can install our springs. So let's do. I do have some other springs on the way, but however, we will go with the springs that came with this kit for now. We do have some Floyd Rose Springs on the way. So here's our setup in the back. And you see, it's not going anywhere. It's not popping out. So I did put, I have already installed the new claw. And I do a double ground on these. This is just my way of wiring. I do a double ground. I want to make sure I'm always grounded. That if I ever have a bad ground pop off and I'm playing, it's going to stay playing. So that's why I do this. And um, you don't have to do it this way. A lot of people don't. It's not a big deal. It's just my way, something my trick that I learned a long time ago. So we're going to take our... We have to set this guitar up, so I'm going to take this off of the um, the neck brace. And I'm going to lay this flush because we're going to install this trim stabilizer. And how I'm going to do this is this is just going to be in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little wedge in here to hold this where it needs to be. And let's see if I get you in there. Let's try this one in place all right so we're going to bring this up to, now that we got the springs on let's bring this up to tune give it get it balanced then we're going to stick our wedge 
in this. And then from there, we will install the trim stabilizer and I'll show you guys how to do that. Stay right there and I'll be right back. So I'm as I'm tuning this up, I realized that I wasn't showing you guys how I was doing it. So what I do is I do the nine volt trick. When I put the nine volt in there and I start to tune this thing up to pitch, what happens is the nine volt will then start to fall out. And as you can see, our first initial tuning, and uh, it's not quite in tune, but you see the bridge came up out of the uh, out of the cavity a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to take do this by hand, and I'm going to screw this bridge in a couple turns on each side equally. I'm going to screw this in until the bridge itself, you with the two springs only. So that's how I want it set up. This one anyhow. The two springs draw it flush and flat. Now, the strings haven't been stretched yet, so this is going to help stretch the strings a little bit too. But we can see we're almost flush, and that's why I just do keep checking. I keep these nice and level. And as you can see, I put a, there's a, like a pad under here. I use Gorilla Flex Tape under here, and it cuts down on a lot of vibrations in the, uh, in the system. So we're almost perfectly flush. I'm going to make this one perfect, even though it you know, guys know that I don't necessarily make them perfectly flush all the time, depending on what guitar I'm setting up. However, this one is going to be perfectly flush. So, I'm finding my balancing act right now. Is what I'm doing. So now, as you can see, hopefully you can see, the bridge is perfectly flush. With, let me try to get you again. It's perfectly flush. All the way across here on the body, maybe, maybe one more turn or half turn. There, we're perfectly flush, exactly. Now I'm going to go back over, and the action's already super low. Um, I probably can't even make it lower, but it's already super low right now. So we're very close. Um, this is pretty much to to where it should be, and. What we're going to do here is go back over, tune this up again and make sure everything is in pitch and then see where our balancing act needs to go from there. Hope that makes sense. So what I'm doing now that I got this kind of tune the pitch is I'm checking my neck and I'm going to keep doing this as I go because contrary to popular belief, you don't adjust your truss rod when the guitar is in tune. Well, of course I'm going to. Because I need my neck precise while it's in tune. It's simple physics. It puts pressure on the neck and it's going to change the neck. So right now, right now with it not perfectly in, don't, when you look at your fretboard, make sure you're not looking at the back angle of the neck. Some of these, ang these necks taper on the bottom. So that means you're going to get a optical illusion. Go by the gauge, by the fretboard. If you're flat here, which... We almost are, but not quite. And I'm going to turn this to make it so it is right. Almost right. This is going to change. It changes according to new strings. It will change even the same gauge if you put new strings on it. The tension will be different. Even if it's the same gauge, the, temp, the on you string, the tension will be different. So when I'm looking down, I get down through and I look for gaps. And I try to do this and see this at the same time. So I went too far there. So that's a very close right there. So I'm going to keep that in here. And I always use one of these. So it has a ball end and it goes in really, really nice. You can get it in and out easily and you're not scraping up your headstock trying to get to it. So which is really cool. Okay, so I'll go back over now. I'm going to tune this up. And you can see we dropped into the bridge a little bit. We're going to go back over, tune this up again. And this is the this is the hardest part is finding your balancing point. Now I have got this tuned to pitch. We are level. We found our balancing point. And now we're going to check our neck and make sure that it's in spec. And it is. It's perfect. So this is good. Fantastic. We got the neck just where it should be, no gaps, nice and straight. And that's why you always want to make sure that you're doing this in conjunction with each other. Because on these gems, it makes a difference. On a lot of guitars, it makes a difference. Um, 
next can be under a lot of tension. So we want the best playability we can. It makes sense to adjust. Now, you want to make sure your guitar has a good truss rod too. You don't want to break a truss rod. So keep that in mind. Anyhow, our bridge here is perfectly, perfectly level. And it doesn't have to be. Like I said, we could drop into the body a little bit or it can come out of the body a little bit depending on trim bar height. But since this one is adjustable, it pops in here. And it's adjustable, it can pop in and stay right there. Or you can spin it down and adjust your height. This one is ideal. And man, this, like I said, this trim system is only 60 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description. Really nice setup. You're getting a lot of features for the money, for sure. Um, this is definitely better than a Floyd Rose special. No doubt about it. And actually, um, it's right up there with a legit Floyd Rose. Now that the, the components and all of your screws are upgraded. It's got a great base plate. And um, that's the starting point you want. And it's got excellent saddles. Okay, so we're going to flip this over now. And this is where we, are, where we were. So we know we don't want this... Pressure. See that pressure come on here? Let's see if I can get you in there. See that, see that move? We don't... I don't want that. So this is where I'm going to take my wedge and see if I can get it kind of in there a little bit to wedge it back there. There we go. So now our wedge is there. That's what I want. So now this is not going to move. Now I can proceed and we can put in our stabilizer a trim stabilizer. Now I have this already set. There's different ways you can set these. I have this set. So when I put this in here under these springs, here is where it's going to go. Okay. And I'm going to actually remove these one of uh, one side at a time to keep tension on. A lot of people don't do that, but I'm going to keep this dead center right here. And I'm going to keep that just where it's about to touch right there. And then I can adjust my pressure points after that. So I don't have to fight myself. So I'm going to take my needle nose and I'm going to pull this out like so. And now we have access to this right here. And I want that, because remember we pushed that back a little bit. I want it just about touching, but not quite. So we want to keep make sure it's centered. Right in the center of that, right there. Right there looks good, I'm guessing. Let's see, you guys can see that. There we are. And we're centered with this, and we're centered with this hole right here. Now I'm just going to tap these in because, well, if your wood splits on your guitar when you're tapping in small itty bitty screws like this, well, you probably need another guitar. There's a, you have a, definitely have an issue <laughs> going on. Let me grab my drill and I'll be right back. So we put our first screw in. And now we're going to put our other screws in. I don't think I can find them. And what's nice is when, once you don't, don't tighten it completely, make sure you're still straight here and here in the center. This kind of eyeball it and if you're good and can get it centered just give it a little push down let the screw start itself okay now we're, we're going to be perfect for the other side so what I'm going to do is not tighten it but snug them okay there's that now what we can do is put on our spring There we go. So now we got a spring on there. Now I can pull this other spring off. Okay. Now that that springs off, we can start our other two screws and we don't have to really worry about lining them up because they're going to definitely just line themselves up. And you could watch people go into this detail and that detail about these. These are a simple unit. Just install it. Set it so it goes back to pitch, and you can loke with it. You can set the the flux the spring design on this, is so you can loke. 
and you can adjust your tension, your lope tension. Nothing more, nothing less. Now we can pull that block out and we can pull this here. Get in there. There we go. Thing. There we are. So we're popping on there. There we are. And now you can see that that's right against just touching that ball, but it's not enough. We need a little more tension on there. So what we can do is pull this apart and we can move these now to bring this in or out in accordance to where we want to be. There we are. See how that's right back where it should be now? That's it. Okay, now we're going to check our tuning one more time and see where we are as far as tuning goes. Tune it up, and it should be right about right there. We'll have to see to be sure, but we'll have to see. We'll have to fiddle with it and make sure it's precise, but that's it. And you can add your other springs, whatever you want to do if you want more tension or less tension. So let's head over there and uh, tune this up real quick, and I'll be right back again. Okay, so now we have it set up and in tune and adjusted. And there we are, and I did end up V-ing the springs simply because it just gave me a better response feel. But uh, that's it. That's the setup back there. And we do have new springs coming that are going to be a little bit quieter than these. But... Um, That is going to work out just fine. Perfect. Okay, let's get this cleaned up and put back together, and we'll give it a test and uh, see exactly how stable it is going to be. I'll be right back with that test. <laughs> 